Okay, now that we have went over the basics to forceful gesture drawing, I will begin this study of our figure alley right here. And when we're doing forceful gesture drawing, the general approach that we have done so far is that we always started with the head. And in forceful gesture drawing, for me, we don't always start with the head. In fact, I really don't recommend you always start with the head. If you see an area of force that you see pushing the most, the area of attraction, I will start with that first. So with the character here, the Ellen, I see her pelvis, which is this area, having the most forceful action um, because if we start with the head, you lose out on so much of what you can do with the figure and you, you sort of just go in more formulaic if you, if you start with the head. You just don't know where to begin, where to end, if you start with the head, if you're trying to do a forceful gesture. So when doing forceful gesture, my technique is to start with areas of push. Start with the area of most push that you think gives the most push, and then build off from there. Now, well, how do you do that? is quite simple. You just use the tools that we have gone over in the last video. Okay, let's start with the figure here. Since we said that the pelvis has the most area of force, what I usually do when doing a gesture, now usually these just take less than 30 seconds to do, but since I'm breaking it down for you in the most simplest way that I can teach, I start with a stroke where I see the force. Now I'm going to draw arrows at the ends of my lines so that I can show you where the force is being built off from. The arrow right here goes into the force that I see, which is her pelvis area. So I, I do a pushing of the pelvis. Now I will do another arrow at the end of this line right here. The next thing that I do is move into the legs. Now, here is where we will use asymmetry versus straight. Here is an example of this. So, where you see the leg, I will draw a line coming off like this. Now, I draw a line. What I usually tell myself every time when I'm doing gestures is to make sure to not make this line too long. You don't want to make it too long so that you can't build off asymmetry. So a rule that I tell you guys, you don't have to follow it, but it's a nice rule to follow to get you into the mindset is to never make your lines too long unless you see a line that really flows through the body, yes, make that long, but for the limb, generally don't make it too long. Okay, so a line for the leg here. The next line that I move into is where the knee is. So I make another asymmetrical line coming off, building off just like the asymmetry up here like so. And this line that you see here leads into the next line that you see in the foot and the uh, leg. Like this. You see the asymmetry? From here to here to here. Where else do you think is going to go in? It's going to go right into where the tibula is, which is right here. Now, what is the tibula? It's a bone that is, let's draw a foot here. This bone is curved. If you were to look at uh, figure, uh, 
skeleton, you will see that the bone of the tibula is curved at the in the insides, and the bone out here, the fibula, is straight. So when we do these, when we do the bone, when we do the gesture here, that's what I'm seeing. So this is the bone for the tibula and the fibula. The tibula is right here in the inside, fibula on the outside, and you have your foot in here. And the knee, which is right up here. These points here would be sort of landmarks that you see on the skeleton. Okay, so we come in here, and as we make our way through the foot, we come through like this, and we stop. Now, you might be saying, where does the straights go? The straights is what you do next. And they go in in areas where you haven't made an asymmetrical line. So they will go in the empty areas right here and here. Now, for the tibula, since it's a curved bone, a lot of times I will make it curve like this. But if you want to follow the rule that I've given you, you can make it straight. But I, I like to give a curve for the tibula foot to the foot. Now, as we make our way back up to the force, I give a nice little straight off to where this is. And this is an indicator. Uh, for a stop, and it's also to show tilt in the body so that I can later utilize my gesture to add the construction. Now we're going to move into the stomach, and the stomach looks very complicated if you don't know how to do a forceful gesture, my way. and it's very simple. You just do the same exact thing how you got this. You make a line where you see forceful push. And I see forceful push coming from her from the bottom of her stomach. So I will draw that stomach pushing. And I will call, I will build off that line from the straight. And the straight shows sort of like also perspective. That's why I drew that here. So I will make the line come out like that, making sure that I get the right push that I want for the stomach. Now remember the brackets that I've been telling you, the less than and the greater than brackets. These brackets will come up and complement the force that we see here. Like so, so when we drew the arrow, draw the bracket as well. And when we draw the bracket, that bracket closes off the force as a forceful shape. A forceful shape. Okay. Now, to complement the forceful shape, we add volume. So, to add volume, you add the cylinder around where the bracket is. And I'm thinking of the form in 3D. You have to think like you have x-ray vision and you're an ant and you're crawling around the body of a figure. You see the wrapping lines are wrapping around the figure like so. Just like that. You don't have to add too much. You can just add probably one or two. But since this is for demonstration purposes, I'm going over so that you can see. Uh, we're going to do the next leg, which is right here. And it's the same process as the weight-bearing leg. And I'm going to put a ground plane right where the weight-bearing leg is, where the, weight, the leg that has the most weight. Now... It's the same thing. Let me put this in another color so you don't get confused. You 
make an asymmetrical line this way and then you lead into a calf like this and then you lead into the foot which is the inside just like here like so an arrow coming out and leading into the foot like this okay well the same thing you did from here you add the straights just like that okay now this is in perspective this is going away from us so to show the perspective of this I will add the volumes of cylinders around just one volume of a cylinder around and making sure I get the perspective of this correct so you see that the cylinder is going away from us like an arrow as you see here the head how to get the head you build off from the line that I've made here now the angle of the head is all up to you when you draw heads generally you pick the angle of the head that you want to draw and you don't determine that by the neck however the, when you, the neck also is a, is, a, is a way to determine how you want to push the neck in gesture so you can have the head and you can have the tilt of the head and then you can have the tilt of the of the neck and the tilt of the shoulder and I may make another course about how to get how to draw heads or this isn't about how to draw heads and then you and then you make a that's how you get the gesture of the head but in, in just getting the lay-in for the gesture you don't have to worry about that so much it's a pretty long uh, neck there okay a wrapping line for the eyes I will put the eyes just beady like this an ear here or, I mean an ear here now for the bunny tail you see it in the reference it's stationary I could push the bunny tail moving this way never copy the reference you can always change you should always change the reference and for the limbs, for the limbs, always pick, to branch off for the limbs, pick the area that you see is pushing up. So if the, if the arm here is not going down, or if the arm is going up, you should always start from going up, not the other way. That's how I see it. So if it's going up, go up if it's going down push the force down okay so you I draw the limb this this way and then I leave in the asymmetry into the hands and I make a gesture for the hands relatively simple never leave out the hands the hands is also telling a story the hands are important just as the rest of the body I can change the ears if I want. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. It's the gesture stage. It's all up to you. And to finish this off, I'll just do a quick little gesture of the of the axe or of the scythe here, just nice and quick. So, if you were doing a life study drawing, real quickly, this is how you would do it. I would just quickly do this real simple, real fast, following the same principles that I've done real quickly. If this was from in my sketchbook, as you can see here, it's a little bit less tight. But this is quick. This is what you would be doing if you were doing Pixel Lovely or any of those timer websites that you see. 
this is nice and quick and fluid and you can see the movement here and that's what we're aiming for in this in this section here 